hi everybody this is julissa thank you so much for coming back to my channel and if you're listening in the podcast thank you so much for being here it is wednesday july 5th 2023 i'm here to do a follow-up video on the rudy farias disappearance and rudy farias has been found video that i did previously because this case has been getting um, the story has been changing a lot. There's a huge update. And I gotta say, on the previous video that I did, I was, you know, being so thankful that he was found, in, which is still, you know, I still believe that it's great that he's out of captivity. Even if he wasn't held by strangers, I am glad that this young man is able from now on to live his life without being a prisoner to somebody else, okay? And the reason that I say that is because the huge update on this case, the Rudy Farias case, he has been apparently caught and called missing for eight years, okay? And they say he has been found, but everything has been a lie because the mom has kept this young man in captivity in their own home under an, an assumed name so that neighbors wouldn't realize that that is him and also she lied to the police saying that he was missing so we have a lot of things going on in this family right now i have to say though that it's almost like when you hear a crazy story like that you know that somebody here in the family circle did not heal from the the accident like i said in my previous video rudy farias lost his brother in 2011 due to a car accident and they say his brother was best friends with him he was only i don't know i think he was 10 years old or something like that in 2015 he goes missing after walking his dogs in the neighborhood and they did a whole search there were volunteers searching for him he never was found until they found him sleeping outside of a church recently and now after all the talks and saying how he was found with bruises and you know wound in his body now everything is coming to light like i always say everything that's done in the dark comes to light rudy farias was being held captive by his own mother who was drugging him okay making him believe that if you know if he goes out and say you know i'm here i'm not missing really that the authorities will take him away from her like i said people that don't deal with big trauma situations in their life when it happens eventually it becomes something bigger the loss of a child you know i'm not a mother never been married nothing like that so i wouldn't ever being able to even um, explain it to anybody but i can understand from hearing other people's stories a very traumatizing situation so you look at a mom perhaps and i'm assuming she's a single mom because i don't think one person will be okay with her keeping him. They are lying to everybody else, right? So especially single mothers, this is why marriage is so important to um, to raise children. They become, they see their children as a, this kind of life bigger than love codependency. It's like, if you leave me, I have nobody else, right? And you have to understand this mom already lost one son. so you can sympathize with her in just that part that the fact that she kept him hidden for all this time tells you that she never recovered from losing that other son that she lost to, to a car accident besides that what she did is horrible okay to brainwash rudy farias for so long i'm lying to him they said that he was definitely drugged you know, when they when he was found, he wasn't even able to communicate fully to anybody. A 25 year old man, I can understand. You see people sleeping, you know, you go to big cities, you see them sleeping, you know, by the train, whatever, right? But they're still able to speak, right? To see that he wasn't even able to fully communicate, that tells you that the mental abuse that went on in this house is visible because of what Rudy she has shown in his communication skills and in his body about you know having open wounds and having blood in his head and all of that something crazy went on on that house for eight years i wonder where are the cousins where is the family where are the christmas reunion 
okay because let's just say right so it's almost like it's not i feel like there's not just her involved in this let's just say right if the some of the neighbors came out ready to talk and say no we know who he is we see him walk to uh by himself to the park his name is Dolph, right short for uh, rudolph right his name is rudy um but his you know his actual name is rudolph but in the neighborhood people know him as Dolph, right short for rudolph and they say no we know exactly who he is and then the mom after the news broke about him being found the mom kept saying oh you know no that's that's a, a cousin that lives with us i mean this lady has been found in a lie and she's still trying to lie about something else right that's why you should never lie one lie leads to another lie into something even crazier right so i remember when she came out and you know she's giving thanks to to the police thank you for you know that my my child has been uh, found and look at this everything is, is coming up to the surface she kept him hidden for eight years mental abuse physical abuse and lying to everybody basically like i said where are the media family that you can understand somebody who lost a child in 2011 in 2015 the other child apparently goes missing and you think she has no need of mental help and she's just living alone by herself it's almost like where is the media family i'm sure somebody else knows something about this right and the fact that you know, he was still wearing, you know, some people say, of course, he was never missing because he was still wearing the same necklace that his brother gave to him that he kept on for eight years. I actually said in my previous video that tells you how much he, you know, he probably found peace on that and even probably living with the mom, you know, having that necklace reminded him of better times with his brother, right? I got to tell you something. We have to be careful. Um we have to be careful to to just assume everything and like believe oh yeah that's what it is like crazy stuff goes on behind closed doors you really don't know and, and sometimes we have we have a, a sense of like what is this it doesn't feel right that doesn't seem right i think i heard screaming from that house one day like if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, it's because you already tell it, like something inside of you is already telling you, act on it, research, something is off, okay? How is this mom was able to fool everybody for eight years? She, this mom has a such a, um, I don't want to say like medical terms because I am not a psychologist, but it's almost like a codependency type of, something else that she never healed from that she feared to lose Rudy now after losing his other brother to a to an accident and how he said what how what happened during Christmas what happened during Thanksgiving nobody came to her nobody knew that she was hidden but then again we have the other case about the Cleveland um ladies that were kept um captive what, what was his name? Um, he I know he was a musician. People knew him in the neighborhood. He's a good guy. He will do barbecues and everything. And this man, Ariel Castro, right? We know, um, you know, they held, they were also held captive for 10 years, I believe. Nobody researched the house. And this man in plain sight had three women being held captive. And one of them actually gave birth to one of his um children right so crazy stuff goes on and that tells you that even as a child disappears such an evil act the same way that people can manipulate other ones saying oh yeah i need help my son is missing when he's actually not that tells you there is so much evil that people are believing their own lies and think they're just gonna get away with it everything that's done in the dark comes to light so this is a huge update on the Rudy Farias case. This man is going to go, it's going to, I hope he gets the help, you know, by professionals and, you know, also the, the ultimate help, which is coming to the, uh, the feet of Jesus Christ. What he went through, not even that, dealing with the loss of his brother, like four years before he went missing, quote unquote and being told that you know don't call the police because um 
they're gonna come and get you and take you away that you never see you never see me again. That's probably what would have happened too, because she lied to the police. She lied to everybody. She made it she made it seem like he was missing when he was actually not. So let me read this article to you guys briefly, okay? Neighbors say missing Texas man found eight years later was living with mom in Houston. A Texas man found alive more than eight years after he was reported missing as a Houston teenager, but neighbors say Rudy Farias has been living with his mother for years. The National Missing and Unidentified Person System says Rudolph Rudy Farias was last seen on March 6, 2015, before the Texas Center for Missing and Houston Police say he was found wounded Thursday outside of a church. He was 18 years old when he vanished after walking his dog in a neighborhood. Farias' mother, Jani Santana, told local news, the son will call the police after finding him unresponsive outside of the church. I'm sure she freaked out when that happened. I'm sure when somebody was like, I don't I wonder how he got to the church. He was she was discovered, you know. The someone called the, uh, the authorities when he was found responsive. He had cuts and bruises all over his body and blood in his hair. Um what does it say here? Hold on. Excuse me. Eight years after he was reported missing, Houston Tessa man was found alive injured. He used to come in my garage, show with my cousin, son, and daughter, neighbor said. So the neighborhood knew about him. And here's the thing, like I said in previous video, your neighbor, they know you. Even you, you might not even talk to them. If you live in an apartment complex or like even like in a neighborhood where houses are within proximity, not not too far away from each other, they know what time you leave. They know what time you come out, all of that stuff. They know, you know, they, they know what car you drive, all of that stuff, right? So the neighborhood, you always have to, that's why people, when something happens, they go door to door because the neighbors, they know. Okay, they know, like, look at the Chris Watts case, right? The neighbor knew and provided so much information. He's like, he never parks outside. Like, who would think of some? or oh, look at something like that? Your neighbor, right? They know where you park. And they, when they see you not doing your routine, they're going to know there is a change, right? And it's nothing wrong with that, right? There's a reason why people have attention to stuff like that. Look how much he helped the, the Chris Watts case, right? So he used to come in, okay. Keisha Ross, who lives in the same street as Santana, the Rudy's mom, according to the civil court records obtained, said that she fed Rudy Ferris will hang out with her family often. He used to come in my garage and she'll be my friends and, and cousin. Um, Russ said that he's known as Dolph, which is short for Rudolph, and they said they said they haven't seen him in weeks. So he either hadn't hadn't got into an argument with the mom and left, or you know maybe she decided the mom that it's time for him to be free. Something happened weeks ago that something different was done right for eight years in captivity by your own mother something some pattern was changed that make him you know come out of you know hiding and not hiding you know voluntarily right obviously but hiding from his hiding spot right and being found at a church out of all places outside of the church right um, Houston police said the family contacted investigator into 2018. The family said that Farid was staying on the property in one of the family members. So one of the see that's what I'm saying. What is the immediate family, right? One of the families contacted the police in 2018, saying that Rudy Farid was actually staying with some of the family members. So what happened to that report investigation to that police case? So. I would say, how come where's the immediate family, right? Even if you live far away, you still have people that come and check on you or, you know, and call you and come and see you for holidays. So I was wondering, where's the immediate family? In 2018, one of Rudy Faria's family members reached out to the police and said, hey, he's actually living with so-and-so. What happened to that report? Like, do people give up on missing children so fast? Is that what that is? So I hope that the whole investigation comes out and to know who actually reported that, right? Um, 
They say the detective went into the residence but didn't find him there. Uh, that were allowed to access. Are you serious? It says here. So after that report was done in 2018, excuse me, the family went to the residence where they are, they were allowed access to. Okay, because you you are investigating a case of a missing child, missing person, whatever. You have a good tip from a family member out of all people. It's not like a stranger, right? You get a good tip from a family member saying, hey, it's actually there. She is lying to you. And you're only going to check the places where you are allowed to check, right? You are the authority. You have a big tip. There's a, an open missing person's case. And you're just going to check the parts of the property where you are allowed to go check, and you're not gonna take it further and get a judge involved and like go. Anyways, that's crazy to me. Um, Martin Renteri, a private investigator, said that she actually hired a private investigator. She hired a private investigator, the mom. Her name is Martin Renteria. was hired by the f mom a few months after Fadia went missing. And at least uh, uh, those reports turn out to be nothing. So, hmm, that's interesting. So she hired somebody to search for him. And apparently, this is a, a speculation, but let's just say, right, Rudy was f dealing with depression and, you know, I don't know what that's called, the terminal term, term when you, you know, you're so close to your brother and you lose your brother. I'm sure it's a term for that. And he decided not to return home, right? 18 years old, he's an adult. He's like, I'm not coming home, whatever, right? And then he actually eventually comes back home. And now the mom sees like, it could have been a, a, what do you call, like, she could have been, it could have been her revenge on him to not let him out anymore, to mentally manipulate him and say, oh, she, you know, the fear of he, him actually missing for a period of time before she kept him in, in captivity for so long and never wanted to notify authorities, hey, he actually came back home or something. Something happened between that time, right? Like I said, we have... A, a, a person who went missing for eight years. A couple of weeks ago, the neighborhood has not seen him. Something happened there. And also something happened maybe a month into he went missing because for her to hire a private investigator that tells you he actually, at some point, he actually was missing. Right? So what did he, so he actually was missing. Perhaps he decided to come back home. And now that he's home, he either got revenge from being going away, right? And she actually also could have been that what she felt during that time and that he was actually missing, she didn't want to deal with that again. So she decided to just leave the case as it is, don't say anything. And now I'm just going to take it upon my hand, perhaps that's what she said, and I'm just going to, you know, keep him here forever, right? But at the end of the day, you guys, I am thankful that he's able to, from now on, live a free life that he so much deserves, and I hope, like I said, he gets the help that he needs. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming back to my channel, Lindsay in the podcast. Hopefully, we get, you know, hopefully there's no other crazy update about this, but hopefully we get to hear from Rudy himself soon. Like I believe about an hour ago before I came and did this video, they were saying that he was actually being interviewed. So he is talking and we're, we're going to get more details. So thank you so much everybody for being here. Have a good day. God bless.